Microsoft just made their RPA tool free to use. My name is Anna Jensen and let me show you how to install and create your first automation in Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Installing Power Automate Desktop is very easy. If you are running Windows 11, you already have it. You can find it by clicking the start menu up here, search for Power Automate, and then you should see a blue icon. If you run Windows 10 like me, we'll need to install it. So let's open up a browser, go to Google and simply just search for Power Automate Desktop. Then pick the first hit, click Start Free, download the Power Automate installer, which will install the 220 megabyte. When we have downloaded and check it, you can click the exe file. That will run the setup process. Just click Next. Agree to the terms of use and click Install. You might get a pop-up which will ask for acceptance. You should click Yes there. That's it. Let's enable two nice extensions. That is the Google Chrome extension and the Microsoft Edge extension. These will allow us to automate web pages. So first click on the Google Chrome. Add it to Chrome, add extension, that's it, we have added it to Chrome. Now go back to the installer, click the Microsoft Edge, choose Get, add the extension here as well. We can now automate in our browsers. Go back to the installer here and click Launch App. We have now installed Microsoft Power Automate Desktop and we can sign in, so click it. Enter your Microsoft email address, click sign in. Use your credentials, I will use mine. That's it, we have installed Microsoft Power Automate Desktop and logged in and we're ready to create our first robot. Let's create our first robot by clicking new flow. Give it a name, I can call it our First robot, you can call it whatever you want, and then click Create. That will open up our editor. Over here we can find our actions. Those are predefined code blocks that we can use instead of writing the code out. That comes in very handy and it's central in Power Automate Desktop. Then we have the main here, that is where our code or blocks will go. Over here we have the variables and we have some other elements that we'll look back at in this session. Finally, we have the menu up here. Let's create a robot that automate an application. That's it, we will open up an application, click some buttons and type into it. We'll use the notepad and that is because you all have it installed and because it's the same principle that will apply when we automate in Notepad or more advanced apps such as SAP or Salesforce. So let's see it in action. First, we will open up an application. So you go over here in Actions, Search Actions, and then you'll find a Run Application like this. This is an action and you can drag it in. So left click with your mouse and drag it into the main here. Now this opens. If we just click save here, we have a step in our main and that is a step our robot can perform. Right now it gives us an error that's because we didn't supply all the relevant settings, so let's do it. To open it again, just double click it and here we can see that the application path can be empty. Since we want to automate in Notepad, let's find the path for that. The easiest thing to do is to go up to start just start typing notepad like this. Right click here, open file location. Here we can see that in Windows Accessory we have a shortcut again. So again, right click, open file location. And here we have the root. So scroll a little bit down, you can see it here. To get the path of the notepad application, simply just shift on your keyboard, right click on your mouse, and you can see this copy as path. So you can click it. Now back to Power Automate Desktop, Control V to paste it in. We don't need the quotation marks around it, so delete it behind and in front like this. 
Now we have everything we need to open up our Notepad application. We can click Save. The error will disappear and we can try to run it. To run it, you just click the play button up here. There you go. We have opened our Notepad and you have created your first robot. Well done. Now let's add some other steps to it that will take you to the core principles. First, we will have a log message. We'll usually use a log message so we know what our robot does. And I'll find a display message. This display message is a message box that will pop up. We will use it a lot when we develop robots because this message box can pause our robot. Let me show you. So the message box title, we can say job done. Down here in message to display, I'll say your robot ran successfully like this. The rest of the properties we'll keep as default. Feel free to experiment with them. I'll click save. Now we can try to run it again. So click the play. That will open up another notepad instance. And here we can see that we have our job done. Your robot ran successfully. So our robot is actually paused. You can see it's running down here 25 seconds and it will do so until we click the OK. The robot will continue and we are finished. That's it. Let's try to populate some text here in the text field. So go up here in actions, search for a populate text field. Here we can see we have two variations. We have the one on the web form filling. We will use the one here in form filling. So drag it in. I'll drag it in underneath to start with. And here we can see that we'll need to select some parameters. First, we'll need to provide some info about where do we want to type in. Of course, you can see with your eye that you want to type in here, but you need to tell the robot what you want to do. So if you click this drop down here, you can see that there are no UI elements to display. A UI element is every element in your Windows desktop that could be icons like these here, that could be elements in our browsers, buttons here in our applications, search field, everything that we can click on or we can interact with. Since we have no UI elements to display, let's add one by clicking here. That will open up this menu that you can see over here. And another thing happening is that you can see we can now, uh, this red border that shows the UI elements. So try moving your mouse around. You can see that we can select UI elements, the buttons, the elements in your file explorer, your browser. And since we want to target here, make sure the red border is around the input field over here. Press control down on your keyboard and left click with your mouse. Now we have created a UI element, which is this one over here. Text to fill in. Since this is our first robot and programmers usually say hello world, we will do so as well. But feel free to type something else in. Now just click save and we can try it once more. Do notice that we will keep opening up these notepads because we don't close them. So let's close all of them so we can see what's actually going on. I click play again. And here our robot stops because it's this message box comes up. So I click OK. Then the robot will continue. And now we will type in hello world. There you go. You have created another successful robot. You are able to type in here. But as you saw, this sequence, it takes it sequentially. So the first one is this, then the log matches that our robot ran, and then the public text field in the window. We want to have the log message in the end. So what you do here is that you click your mouse on the display message, and you can simply just move it down. So now you change the order of the actions. So we will fill in the text field, and then we will display the log message. So we created a UI element here that was our text field and we can inspect it by clicking this one up here. It says UI elements. So click this. Here you can see that there's a window called window on title notepad. This is exactly the title of our notepad here. And then we will have our actually UI element. It says document text editor. We can rename this to make it more descriptive. So if I right click here, I can click rename. I will call this notepad text field and 
before I click enter, notice what happens over here. So when I click enter, it also changes over here. It's nice to keep nice descripting names so you can see what's going on. And especially if you come back to your code later on, we should always keep nice descripting name. That is best practice. Now let's also close the application because our robot will open up this application. It also needs to close it. So over in action, find a close window here under windows. So drag this one in. Here I want to, first I want to have it in the end after the message box because then I can see what's going on. I'll click OK in the message box and then we will close down the notepad. Here we can see we can find the window mode by window by UI element. We can also click the drop down here and choose to close a Windows instance or choose to close by title and all class. We will choose the by window UI element that was the default. And now the clever thing comes in because if we click this drop down here, we can see that we actually have this window. That is the window untitled notepad. This got automatically created when we created the UI element notepad text field up here. So the notepad text field, that is a child of this window. They're both UI elements. One of them is the entire window and this notepad text field is the UI element inside it. That is the input text field. So we just select this window untitled notepad by double clicking it. That's it. We can click save. Now let's inspect our automation. I'll usually run my robot a lot of the times when I develop it because I need to see what's going on. Imagine that we made a wrong step in the beginning, then we made 20 steps and suddenly we'll see that we had to change it all over. So a good habit is to check it when you develop. Maybe not as after every step, but maybe after two or three steps. So let me close down my notepad here and let's inspect what's going on. I click run again. I open up the notepad, I populate the text. When I click this, your robot ran successfully. It will perform the next action, which is the close window. So I click OK here. And now we can see that we try to close down the application. Then this window, the notepad pop up, shows that do you want to save changes to untitled? Here we can either click save, don't save or cancel. We don't really want to save this document, but we want to have this window close properly. So we want to click don't save. And that is lucky because then we'll get a chance to see how we can click elements in an application. If I go over here to my actions and then I'll search for click, choose the one on the UI automation, click UI element, drag it in. So that needs to come after the close window because this only pop up when we have tried to close the window. And here we can add a UI element. We want to click the don't save and just as before, click the drop down here and we cannot use this. So we'll add the UI element. Again, you can choose all the UI elements. We want to target don't save. So hold control in on your keyboard, click don't save. That's it. We can also choose which type of click we want. We just want to left click because that will click the don't save. So I'll click save. Our robot is done. So again, I'll move the lock message to the end. So left click with your mouse and drag it all the way to the end. And let me close everything here and try to run our robot once more. So we will open up the notepad in a few seconds. We will start performing the actions, hello world. And then we will click don't save. That's it. Our robot ran successfully. We can click OK here. Congratulations. You installed Power Automate Desktop and you created your first robot. If you have any problems or questions around Microsoft Power Automate Desktop, you are invited to join my Discord. We are more than 2000 RPA developers ready to help and network with you. See you there.